Ed, welcome to uh, another Exchange uh, 2019 video. In this video, we're actually going to quickly go through an installation of Windows Server 2019 Core. Uh, I'm using my virtual machine on, on my Mac because I don't have access to my Azure Lab at the moment. Just to give you an example of how to do installation on Server Core and how simple it is actually. So I did initially install it, but I locked myself out of um, the actual OS because I couldn't remember the password. So now we click next, install. And it's pretty straightforward to do the installation. Um, you can do this from a script as well, um, but we're not going to do that in this video. Okay, so I'm going to just keep the product key for now. So we're going to just do data center edition and got to accept the license terms, do a custom install. I'm going to just delete all the partitions that I have here that was created by the previous one, which I can't remember. Right, so click next. And it basically looks the same as a normal GUI installation, same install window screen, etc. It's just that once you boot, it's going to boot in just to a command prompt. And then you have to basically um, go and configure it using. Um, the command is config. So we'll just wait for this to quickly do its installation. Obviously on more powerful machines um, the installation will be a lot quicker than what it is now but it's not going along too badly. And then once we've built this box, then in the next video, we will take a look at installing Exchange 2019 on Server Core as well. That is a huge improvement because it means that there's less updates to do, number one, less surface attack. It just means that you don't have a desktop to log into to configure the server. You have to do everything with PowerShell remotely or using um, Internet Explorer and logging on to um, the Exchange Admin Center to configure what is configurable in the EAC. Right, this shouldn't take too long and then it will reboot and then we should be good to go. Sorry for you hear the fan spinning in the background. It's, it's a quite hot today, so the machine is feeling the heat a bit. And there we go, installing updates. Um, shouldn't be too many of those to install. And we're pretty much done. So I'm going to reboot now. Okay, so I'm not going to press any key because obviously it's going to take us back to the setup. So now it's booting Server 2019 Core Edition. It looks, like I say, exactly the same as a GUI for now. Um, when it boots, but we'll now obviously get presented with a screen, got to enter the password, and then once the password is entered, then we'll get to a command prompt, and then I'll show you how to configure it. Right. Almost done. This normally doesn't take too long to configure. OK, 
Okay, so one more reboot and then we should be good to go. Okay, so this is the screen you presented with. It's asking us that we need to change the administrator account before we sign in, so press enter. Um, I'm just going to create the password quickly and confirm it. It's been changed. Okay, right, so now we are at the command prompt now to get to the screen the configuration screen you type sconfig.cmd and as you can see <clears throat> you pretty much can join a work group or domain you can change a computer name you can add a local administrator configure remote management uh, configure windows update settings uh, remote desktop your network settings, telemetry, activation, and then your options from 12 to 15 is basically logging off, restarting, shutting down server, exiting to the command line. So if we had to choose option one, for example, if we wanted to join a work group, we could call it uh, my home, for example. And as you can see in the background, it Changes it for you. Um, if we want to change the computer name, we call this DCO1. We need to reboot the server and for it to take effect. So let's reboot it quickly. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so now we're back in. Press Ctrl of Delete and retype in our password that we set previously. And now we go back to sconfig again. And as you can see, I am joined the work group. I changed the computer name. Now if I wanted to go to the network settings, obviously I've got a I've got DHCP enabled so on, on this virtual machine, so it's picking up an, ad an adapter address. But if you select the adapter, which is basically the index number, and you press enter, you can now basically see IP subnet DHCP is enabled as mentioned. So if you wanted to basically clear everything, so if I wanted to set an IP address, I could choose option one. Um, specify S and then I could say 192.168.0.10 subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and then my gateway for example was 10 2.1.55 so obviously this is not going to go anywhere, it's just a fictitious default gateway. Um, this server will never be able to browse out and it's not going to be used for long. Then if you want to set your DNS servers, um, sorry, you select two. Then enter a new DNS server, you could say 8.8.8. .8 and then if you want to specify an alternative, you don't want to specify one, you just press enter. And as you can see now, it's been configured. We go back to the main menu. You have the option to enable a remote desktop, so uh, which normally isn't advisable because the amount of attack on remote desktop from outside. Um, you can enable it, and then if you want a secure option, you choose one, and basically now it will tell you that it is an uh, sorry, it's enabled. Secure clients only. So that's pretty much how easy it is. If you had to join a domain, you'd just be prompted for username and password, and you'd enter that, and then you configure your activation because obviously this machine needs to be activated, or else you're going to hit that expiry date and then run into more issues. To 
shut on the server, which I want to do now. You just type 14, asks you, you pretty much yes, and your server will be shut down. Thank you for watching.